Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and today I uh, I thought we'd have a look at another of my um, old Valve antique radios. Um, See, we had a bit of fun with that um, little Sears silver tone, and we got that um, up and running. Uh, this is another set that I've had in for a very long time. Um, I can't actually remember quite where I got this set from. It was either a BVWS um, event or it was um, a radio file auction, something like that. I will not have paid more than £5 for it. I never, ever, ever really pay more than £5 for these just simple wood-cased, plain radios. Um, this one is slightly more interesting than um, most. It's a, um, a Portadyne. And you won't be able to pick this up on the camera, but if we look at it, it's a two-wave band. And it's medium wave and short wave. And that gives a slight clue to its origin. Because, like the Sears Silvertone, this is also actually an American set. And the reason this arrived in the UK was um, due to the Second World War. And basically, we had a massive shortage of domestic radios in Britain. Because the entire manufacturing base of Britain had gone over to the war effort to produce um, war weapons. Um, all the radio factories have obviously been turned over to produce um, military radio equipment, things like that. So spare parts for domestic receivers were basically had run out. There was no more spare parts for um, domestic radios. So what happened was um, the U.S. It was I think the the scheme was called lease lend or lease loan or something like that. And basically the U.S. shipped over lots of fairly simple basic um, radio sets of course uh, that left, led one slight problem which was obviously America runs on 110 115 volts I think it's it's around that it's around the hundred between 110 and 120 volts and obviously Britain well at the time uh, Britain run on everything from 100 volts up to 250 volts both AC and DC uh, we didn't standardise the uh, electrical system in the UK till I think the 1960s. So uh, yeah, there was um, a, mar a marade of different voltages in the um, UK. So um, these were basically converted to uh, work on UK voltage. And uh, that's one reason why I've never actually powered this radio up. It's always just been sat on a shelf as a um, display model. Because... I'll turn this radio around now and I'll show you. Um, basically, the way they got around the voltage difference, and it is quite nice, it has got its back. It is really complete, this radio, considering it's probably um, very early 1940s, probably around 42, 43 ish. Hopefully, we may find some dating and evidence inside it. Um, but anyway, we'll uh, get the back off and Lovely. I, I love the health and safety in um, this time. It had a back on it. If you took the back off it and electrocuted yourself, you was an idiot because you took the back off it. The fact that you could just undo the back like that and lift it off was no um, actual problem. But anyway, so we're in. And the, here we have the mains flex. And this is the very reason I've never actually um, bothered powering this thing up. This isn't an ordinary mains flex. This is what is known as a line card dropper. And basically what it is, the radio is really a 110 volt, 120 volt radio. And they incorporated a resistance wire into the cable to drop the extra 100 volts or 120 volts or so, 130 volts, whatever it was, depending on what the local voltage in um, that part of the UK was at the time. They basically just cut this thing to length, and uh, whatever they cut it to length for, whatever it dropped the voltage to um, power the radio. Now, what that means is, there's usually more than uh, one conductor in here. Because the, ha the um, high tension still needs a higher voltage, and that'll be um, dropped by a resistor in here. It's really to just run the filaments at the lower 110 volts that they're expecting. So, I don't know if you can see this, but inside the cable, what we've got, we'll have a neutral conductor. 
it's very 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 crumbled this cable it's very uh, most of the insulations actually broke off it and I am being careful with it for a very very good reason so one of these is the um, will be the neutral and the other side will be a live to a resistor in the set to um, the high tension that will go through the rectifier and this wire here you can see with um, this cotton cover stuff and this is why I'm being careful because this is actually asbestos wool and um, as soon as we get inside this the first job we're going to do is actually um, remove this cable and um, put it in a bag for disposal because asbestos isn't as dangerous as people make out but even so this is a very flaky crumbly type of asbestos and basically what you've got inside that is another conductor and it's a resistance wire and depending on the length of the cable that will that wire there will drop the voltage to the um, filaments in the radio and that is how they actually um, got these American sets to work in the uh, UK and back in the day I was told by an old uh, radio engineer uh, many many years um, experience in the trade that these cables were known in the trade as carpet burners because they actually used to get warm in use as they um, basically all they do is they convert the excess voltage to heat and they warm up and apparently um, people, what people used to do is um, they used to go to bed at night with the radio switched on and um, depending on the voltage this could be 10 foot long because um, you had to have the length to um, actually uh, drop the right the correct voltage and they'd um, actually wrap it around the feet and use it to um, warm the feet in bed at night which is a, a fantastic health and safety uh, thing nowadays so yeah the first thing we're going to do is um, we'll take the knobs off we'll take the feet off here we'll get the chassis out uh, we'll, we'll dispose of this um, cable and we'll have a general assess round the um, actual chassis, see what we're going to have to do. So there is, I very, very much doubt we're going to be able to get this radio to play today. But we can certainly make the first attempts at um, getting in there and actually getting this thing somewhere near working. Um, well, obviously, we'll test things like the output transformer, um, see if the speaker's working, things like that. Make sure we're not going to hit any uh, major stumbling blocks. Not that they really are, because I've got plenty of spare parts for these um, old vintage sets. So, we'll uh, just tuck that away for now, because like I said, I don't want to uh, get any asbestos dust anywhere, really. Without further ado, we'll have a look at perhaps um, getting these control knobs off. And I think we need a, uh, we need rather a thin screwdriver to do this with. Are you still in um, shot? Yeah, you can see what I'm doing there, can't you? See what we've got in the way of a very small thin screwdriver. Ah, that might do it. These have a little grub screw inside. The only problem is these have probably been in there for like 70 years, depending on if anyone's been working on this in the past. And we don't know how tight they're going to be. We don't want to force them. That does seem like it's undoing. Very, very tight, but it does seem like it's actually... There we go. It's the first one off. And the screws are... In these ones, the screws actually um, straight into the Bakelite. Some have a little brass set screw inside them. Some of them hor horrifically have a metal one, and they tend to corrode in. The brass on metal can be a little bit troublesome, but you can usually free them off. Um, what I might do is just, uh, it's not the right thing to use. In fact, ah, I've got some WD down there. What I'm going to do, because that one was a little bit tricky, in fact, I'm going to uh, just get that top on there. Uh, I'm just going to squirt a little bit of um, WD in that hole just to ease it going back in and let it sit like that. Yeah, that's soaking in there. Let me sit it up right so it doesn't pour back out and we can soak in. And I'm going to do the same on these two. I'm just going to squirt a tiny bit of WD. And then what's the bet? And that one's going to be on the underneath now. Right, let's try and get this one off and then we'll. Uh, in fact, what we can do, we'll turn that round. 
there it is. So we can see that one as well. We'll squirt that in there. And we'll have a go at getting this one off now. Oh, that come off really nice and easy. That WD really does help an uh, awful, awful lot to get them off. Let's have a go with this one. Again, that comes straight off. So WD is the key. Put that away. And let's have a look at getting the um, chassis out of here. Now, I think these pieces of wood are covering over where the screws we need to um, access are. So let's get a screwdriver. Let's get these screws out. Yeah, they've been put over to cover cover up the chassis screws. I wonder if that's been done as a safety a safety feature. So if these become live for any reason, you can't um, you can't touch them. Get a couple out. It's a while since I've worked on one of these old uh, vintage radios. Apart from that Sears, but we didn't really do any work on that, did we? I don't know whether this has ever been worked on before. And judging by that line dropper, um, I sincerely doubt anyone's uh, touched this radio for a very, very, very long time. That line dropper could also cause us an issue because unfortunately what tend to happen is people didn't realize how they worked and um, got sick of the long cable shortened them and basically overrun the entire radio and um, overran the valves and basically wore the valves out prematurely in them um, anyway let's see if we can get the chassis out now and uh, we will have a uh, we will have a look I can see something straight away actually looking in there I believe that someone may have changed the speaker in the past. That speaker doesn't look quite right. But anyway, let's uh, withdraw the chassis. Yeah, someone's definitely worked on this radio in the past. And they've left... Uh, let's get that line card out of the way. They've left one problem, which they've... Uh, They've rewired a new speaker in and they've left the, uh, the cables incredibly short to actually uh, disconnect the output transformer. In fact, they may have changed the output transformer, I'm not sure yet. I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, can I get the whole baffle board out? I don't know. It does seem to have been bodged in somewhat, that. Um, let's have a think what our best course of action there is. I think our best course of action actually is just to cut this wire clear. And then at least we can... Um, I don't like the way it's been run anyway. It doesn't look right for the radio. So um, I think we'll just cut it and I will uh, replace it with something more um, correct when we uh, get to that period, that part of the uh, restoration. So let's cut that. And we can get the case out of the way for now. And we'll talk about the case a little bit later on. Because it's quite interesting, this case. It's very, very cheaply made. Right, there we go. And there is the, uh, there is the radio chassis, as we can see. Now, the question is, what work has been done to this in the past? I'm not 100% sure yet. It's def that cable has definitely been replaced because that's got red and black colour codes. That's a piece of um, probably 1950s or 1960s um, flex off an appliance, perhaps off a, an old radio or um, something like that, or a television. I'll just turn it up and that will give us an idea what's been done. And judging by this it looks like really nothing has been done to this thing at all let's uh, see if we can get you in a little bit closer here in fact let me take you off the uh, take you off the tripod 
and we'll go in for a close up so you can actually see what the, the state of this uh, old radio is. So we've got the um, original um, smoothing capacitors up here. We've got a, uh, I think they're the old Viscanol um, type TCC. We'll make, they actually might still be alright. Some of them are really, really, really um, reliable. We will test that and see if it's still okay. We've got another um, smoothing capacitor down there. That may be a replacement. Yeah, it's got tape wrapped around it. That's been replaced in the past, but it's been replaced a very long time ago. Um, we have... Ah, now this shows the uh, cabling a little, um, a little bit better. Now, we have the um, high tension going straight in. If you can see that wire there, that's the um, asbestos colored wi covered wire. And it doesn't appear actually to go through any form of dropper resistor. It goes straight into the rectifier valve. So we're going to get rid of that straight away. That's the, um, the first port of call is to... Uh, so that goes into the rectifier valve. Hang on. Hmm, so how are the... Uh, Hmm, this is interesting. So it looks like the um, the high tension. Oh dear, that's crumbling away. Um, the high tension is actually coming from the um, dropped wind, the dropped um, resistance wire, and the filaments seem to be connected through this wire here, and that's going up to the dial lamps, and the other side's coming back to the switch. And we may have another resistor somewhere. There's something been chopped out here. There's obviously been work been done in the past up here. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I'll put you back on the... Uh, well, let's carry on well, let's carry on back down the radio. We've got lots of wax paper um, capacitors here. Many of these are likely to be leaky. Um... There's only one I'm really concerned about at the moment, which we will trace, which is the um, grid stopper on the output valve. Um, we'll find that, we will locate that one, and we will replace that before we even attempt to um, apply power to this thing. There's still some more wax paper capacitors down here. Again, they're not in a place, I don't think, which will cause um, a major issue. Um, another one down there. Everything else, um, we've got some nice, I believe, um, they're called dog bone style resistors. Got another one up there. They're uh, ring tip spot style resistors, very old style resistors. Some slightly more modern resistors. An electrolytic back there. That may or may not be okay. It's probably dead. I don't think it's in um, anywhere that's going to cause a major issue, though. So, yeah, I'll put you back on the tripod. Can you see the uh, radio there? Okay, yep. I wish I could get you a little bit closer. I really need to get a camera with a zoom on it. Right, now, in fact, no, I'll use my old clippers. And we will uh, we'll cut that wire there so we know what it is. So we just, you see how crumbly the old insulation is. This is what you've got to be careful with with these um, very old radios. Look. This is why you don't just plug them in unless you really know what you're doing. You know, that's the insulation off that and it's literally just... It's gone solid. The rubber is actually solidified. But we know where that wire's come from now, so we're, um, we're happy. We can um, do something with that. Again, this green one, which I think originally probably was black. You can see how bad that is. It's just crumbled away as I've tried to cut it. But at least we can see where it's come from, and that's the important thing. And then the one we really want to get rid of is this, um, this asbestos riddled thing here. So we'll give that a snip off there. There's no point even measuring the resistance of this, because we don't know what the original length of it was. It certainly was longer than um, the like, meter that's on it at the moment, it's about three foot, possibly of um, resi dropper resistance there and it would have definitely definitely been you know eight foot ten foot something like that long originally so let's uh, let's slowly ease that out of the radio I'm going to try to be as gentle as possible because I don't want to 
spread um, asbestos flakes everywhere. There we go. Let's pull that out. Gently ease that out, and that's out of the way. We'll just find something to, um, to pop that in because I don't want to leave that lying around. I've got a bag here. So it's not as dangerous as people make out, but this is quite crumbly and flaky and powdery, and that's the type of asbestos you really do want to avoid. So uh, we'll put that in a bag like that and seal it up, and then that can be safely disposed of. Just put some tape around it. There we go. So that's nice and safe now. It's not going to be an issue now that can be um, disposed of. We need to go to the local um, recycling centre because they have got an asbestos um, disposal place there. I'll just get these bits of rubber off my uh, workbench. Okay, so we... Um, oops. And they're them little um, ceramic isolators. They're not a problem. They're um, just made out of ceramic though. So there we go, um, we're inside, and there's, uh, it's quite a, uh, quite a sophisticated radio, it's a little bit more sophisticated than I was expecting, I mean we've got, um, what, one, two, three, four, it's a five valve, um, we've got a um, rectifier valve, which is, I presume this is the rectifier, let's have a quick look, see what it says on it, it's a, um, 25-4-G, uh, sorry, 25-Z-4-G, so yeah, that's a 25-volt, um, um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll do a bit of maths here, we'll work out what the actual um, valve count is on here, so that's a 25-volt um, filament, let me find a piece of paper and a pen, and we'll write this down as we go. Where's my pen? There's a pen. I'm sure I had a bit of ah, there's a bit of paper. So we've got um, the rectifier. So come on, pen. Rectifier. We've got 25 volts. 25 volts. Um, I think this may be the output valve, because usually in um, these old radio sets, the um, output valve is um, situated right next to the rectifier. And that's a 25A6G. And that's all being, all these valves are in the um, correct places. So that's a, to another 25, so let's say output. And that's another 25 um, volt filament. Volt filament. Uh, let's move to this one over here. We'll just be gentle taking the top cap off. You've got to be very careful, or uh, the glue in these starts to fail. And if you're not careful, you pull the um, top cap off. And when you're pulling a valve out, never pull it out by the glass. Always um, remove it by the base, if at all possible. Because um, again, after all these years, the old um, shellac glue that they used has started to fail, and you can, if you're not careful, pull the actual valve out of its base. This is a 6R7G, so that's a um, that'd be like a mixer oscillator or something like that. So um, we'll put IF. We'll put IF for the next um, probably two in the detector. So that's um, six volts. him back let's have a look next it's likely that these are all six volt valves we'll see that's a 6k7g again I think that's a um, RF pento so that's we've got another um, And that's another six volt valve. This could not, this may not bode well for this radio. It could be that unfortunately someone has um, connected this up to um, 
the mains, not really, well, with the way it's connected up at the moment and blown the filament in every one of these valves. But we can, um, we can check for that. That's a 6K8G. That's probably a detector. Or it's either a detector or it's first, um, first um, RF amplifier, something like that. It's either a super, a super heterodyne set, this. So we've got another 6 volts there. So we've got, and then you've got the um, dial bulb as well, which is this little uh, thing up here. Let's see what that is. The dial bulb is. Well, the dial bulb is intact, which is um, one good thing. Unfortunately, I cannot read a, um, a voltage on it. It could be anywhere between 3 and 30 volts. I've seen all sorts used in these um, old radios. But it is intact. You would expect that would be the first thing to blow. In fact, in uh, many early radios, um, they actually used a little um, bulb like that as a fuse in them. Anyway, let's do the maths here. So we've got 50 volts, and then we've got um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we've got 50, 60, 70 volts, haven't we? So we've got um, 70 volts. And, and the way it was wired up, it looked like uh, we've got 70 volts um, right up through the uh, mains lead, which does not bode well for this um, for this radio, especially not considering the um, high tension was on the uh, rectifier valve there. Unless, unless, let's have a think. Is that a directly heated? I'm just thinking out loud here, um, I'm doing this as much for the interest of getting this working as it is for making this video, unless that is a um, directly heated uh, rectifier valve, in which case the valve heaters and the anode of the valve, if it is, yes the anode of the valve can um, share the same connection, which is a possibility. That would make what would that like? Would that like make that one neutral? And the third one was actually Earth. Hmm. This is. Uh, I'm really. I think I'm going to have to get a um, a schematic for this thing if I uh, if at all possible. It might be quite tricky because I've no model number on it. So if there's any of my American viewers out there, they recognise this radio. Um, so it is a portadine, and I'm pretty sure it is of um, US manufacture. I'm pretty damn certain it's of US manufacture. Um, any information would be uh, very much appreciated. I suppose what we could try and do is we could see if we've got continuity between all the um, between all the valves. That's one thing we can try. Let's get the tester out. I don't think I'll make this video that much um, longer than I've already made it. Well, how long have I already made it? It's not too long, is it? It is going to be a part one, this, I think. Because I think I'll probably have to get some um, bits and bobs to uh, progress in this project. Let's uh, get the old test meter out. I should really get my... Um, Avo out, Avo eight out of storage. Um, seeing that I'm working on the. I am sorry, folks. The camera died again. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to buy a new camera. It's no, um, it's no good. It's not even the battery this this time. The um, battery is still showing three quarters um, charge on it. The thing just actually just shut itself down um, through recording. Anyway. Um, hopefully you've not missed um, too much and it's not shut down and uh, missed too much. I was just saying in the next um, instalment, now we know that this radio um, basically um, should fire up on 110 volts. We've no uh, reason to believe we can't get this to um, possibly power up on 110 volts. At least um, we can see whether the filaments all fire up and um, get that far. 
have a look at the um, output transformer and the speakers they make, make sure that they're okay like I said in the next um, video hopefully uh, we will see whether we can um, actually get this thing to play so um, I hope you enjoyed that for now um, like I said if you um, enjoy these things um, stay tuned for part 2 and uh, thanks for watching and goodbye